Good morning, folks. Man, it's one of these uh, days where you're just happy that uh, you are alive. And it's absolutely gorgeous out here. It is a Thursday. I'm the only one on the, the only boat on the lake so far. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I can honestly say that I just enjoy being here right now on my boat with my rods by myself my peace I have everything you know laid out the way I want it my net is here my tackle this is paradise for me I don't need to die to go to paradise this is this is paradise for me but let's make a quick live video and I will monitor time this time time is it 7 30 in the morning this is what i'm gonna fish so you see some brush here now there's not a lot of fish on this brush there's one here i mean i can see four or five crappie but i already know that if you have a good solid brush and you know it's this time of the year just fish it even if you don't you don't need a mega school every time because you just can't see all the fish on live scope. You can't see all the fish on live scope. Some of them are behind the brush. Some of them are on the bottom. You just can't see all of them. Some of them are just three feet to the right or three feet to the left and you can't see them. So, I mean, let's just catch some fish. Now this brush that you see here is deadly. I love jigging for crappie. But you're not gonna jig around this brush i promise you that it's made of two by four and these jdm jigs i mean they they just touch a two by four and they're so sharp they penetrate right away there is no there is no getting them out of a two by four so don't be a hero don't show me your weedless jigs when you see something like this float is the only way uh, to pluck fish hiding around this brush. You're not gonna catch all of them But whatever you catch that's the only thing you can do without sustaining heavy financial damages So what am I gonna do I mean, the water degree is 57.8 Where the transducer is at least um, we haven't seen summer we haven't even seen i don't know i guess 58 is spring but we haven't seen summer it's the middle of may here in illinois the water hasn't hit 60 degrees yet where is the summer this year can we get some uh, you know global warming just in chicago please i mean the summer is almost over we haven't seen 60 degree weather but anyway i do have three float rods today because this lake has a lot of nasty brush so mostly I fish this lake float um, I'm making a video about float you know the, the best float rig but I'm not gonna talk about that today M many of you have requested video about you know my float rig but I'm gonna show you what I'm using right now on this particular float I still have the nickel worm I don't think at this time of the year nickel worm is the best but the way I have it set up with another shot on top of it um, because of this shot if I tie another one gram rig then my float will sink because my float has only one gram buoyancy so I can't really put a different lure but at this time of the year they even though the water is not 60 yet they're pretty aggressive and you don't need these tiny baits that's the time of the year that you can use juicier baits brighter colors and get away with it because you don't need you know finesse stuff at this time of the year but okay too much yapping let's catch yeah i don't see much right now but uh, I, mean, I promise you this is my first cast honestly i promise you i'm still gonna catch fish here even though i don't see much uh, on the live scope that's why i don't even look at the live scope i mean i look at the live scope to find the brush actually so i don't need to throw buoy markers all the time but after that i i mean i'm not looking to see 
if I have fish around my float right now, there was a bite. Fish folks. First of all, I cannot, my baits are so small, I do not see my baits on the live scope. I don't know if something wrong with my live scope, but this nickel worm, you're not gonna see it on the live scope unless you dangle it right in front of the live scope. But cast over there, you know, 15, 20 feet from me, I cannot see my uh, worm, so I don't try. I, I don't, you know, bend my neck all day trying to see my... I hate that. I see people do that, you know, fishing with the neck, you know, just bent down, getting deformation in your spine. They're going to have a, a new name, Live Scope Spine Deformation. It's going to be a real disease a few years from now. But I hate that. Yep, that's what we're going to be catching today. Tuxedo crappie. Now you can see this crappie, the tail is kind of damaged. Because they've been making beds. Now I don't think they have spawned yet. Because, I mean, they don't all spawn at the same time. But on my way here, I... Um, I was scanning the, the usual drop-off locations just in front of the flats and they were congregating there and son of a keys man yeah they were congregating there so I know there is fish that is still deep actually right now uh, so they definitely not spawned yet uh, it, it is still pre-spawned, they're kind of congregating and schooling up before they hit the flats. Some of them are already on on some brush that is kind of medium depth, like this one here. I know from experience this is one of the first brush that will get fish, and then the first brush that will lose fish after spawn. Man, I hate these geese. They're just annoying. They don't sound like nature to me. I want to get a BB gun and fill their butts with... with BBs. Boom! Another one. See, I told you there's some fish here. I got three casts. I missed the first. Come here, buddy. Now that is a good fish, folks. That is a nettable fish. No, I'm not gonna flip this fish. I'm gonna net this fish and maybe even keep it. It's been a while. Yeah, that is a good fish. I was thinking, where did these slabs go? That is a good fish, folks. Usually, on this lake, I catch the big slabs in the fall, when it's very cold, almost winter. In the spawn, I catch only, in May, only 8 and 9 inches. But this here is a 12 inch fish. Okay, a little bit short of 12, no squeezing. 11 and... Well, it's 30 centimeters. But uh, I will keep this fish. I haven't kept fish in a long time. So, this is just a beautiful fish. I mean... I apologize, I know some of you will give me the thumbs down, but I will keep this fish. Look at my new toy here, extended all the way. I will make a video about this soon. Get my food out of here. Okay, so three bites, two fish, one keeper. I'll take that start. What, 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 what fell now? Something fell. That's the net. You think it's so smooth when I edit the video, but it's not so smooth. Not everything is smooth. All right. Not everything is smooth. Now let's catch me some more. Some more slab of roos. That was a nice female there. Boom, down again. Wow, what an enormous turtle. Do you see this thing over there? This thing is like my 
Subaru seat. Wow, that is enormous turtle. And there is no train here. Where is this train noise coming from? It's like it's coming from the heavens. Okay. That is a nice, solid 10-inch male. See, they're still hitting the nickel worm, even though it's tiny. Oh. Well... I think you saw him enough. But see, no fish on the live scope. I mean, there is some dots here and there, but I think they're... They're around the 2x4, and this 2x4 is solid. And boom again! See? I, I showed you the live scope, folks, I'm not kidding. If you know your brush, and the brush is solid, it's solid wood, give it a chance. Don't just dismiss it because, oh, I should have netted this fish. That was not, a, not a, another 12, but that was a very similar fish. Big, white female. That was a big, white, wide female. I don't know what happened with my float here either. Should have netted that fish. Let me check my depth here. Yep, depth is good. I don't know what to do here to get my net a little bit more comfortable because I should have netted this fish, even if you don't lose them, when you both flip, I think that was 11 inch, not 12, but 11. But when you both flip them, you lift this heavy fish, you kind of tear the mouth a little bit. So that's not nice either. So you should, let's put this rod holder here maybe. can't put the net in the rod holder because then I can't cast. Boom! Boom! Yeah. Yeah, it works. Float fishing is definitely under... I will boat flip this guy. Up to 10 inch. I think the weight of the fish is not enough to tear the fish. But over 10 inch, the weight of the fish alone is enough to create a tear in the mouth. Yep. Yep, his tail is torn. He's been digging. He's been digging. You see my bait? My bait is a little bit pants down. But I do crazy glue them at home, so I don't have to make adjustments on every cast. Let me show you again. Okay, that's that's what I see, folks. There's one fish here, one fish here. And then there is some bluegill, and the crappy leaves are brighter because it's so white. Now, this, I believe, is crappy or a bass, but the small one's probably bluegill. But definitely not a big school or anything. But I think there is fish, I don't know, inside, behind the 2x4. So just cast there and enjoy. Don't try to... My eyes are on the float. Don't try to go there and drop it in front of their mouth, another fish. I hate that kind of sniping business. You go and try to snipe them. You're going to catch some of these too. Some of these, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. This guy got a sore. Look, somebody caught him already. I don't think he got a sore from this hook though. This is the little chromie. Just search for little chromie. Jig head, I did review it on my channel. The wind is picking up a little bit difficult to cast. The little chromie has no barb and it's super thin wire. It's not that sharp, but that's why I like it. Super thin wire, no barb, very easy hook removal. 
Very easy. Boom. Ah, I missed it. Let's see. I don't want to take it out now. That was a bluegill bite. Too sharp. I shouldn't even have set the hook because when it goes... Tsk, these are the BGOs. Yeah, we're gonna have to shamefully retrieve. I'm gonna have to shamefully retrieve without a fish here. But uh, we're gonna get right back in there. This Barivas line, I'm gonna review also. This thing is just pure liquid goodness i was gonna use another word but uh yeah i'm gonna review this line soon it's just so pleasant for float fishing it stays straight it stays soft it stays smooth it has a little stretch not much stretch Very forgiving. Let's both flip this dude. He's borderline. I gotta get a, some kind of mat here. Floor mat. Because I'm landing all of the fish. And the crappy is not slimy. Crappy is not slimy. But I mean. It, it starts to get. How big do you think this fish is? Huh? I say nine and a half. Let's just, I mean, this is not a big fish, but just to keep myself, uh, this is a 10 inch fish. Well, okay, with the mouth open, but he's more than nine and a half. I think he's 10. If I squeeze him legally, uh, the way it's legally measured, he'll be 10. I just don't like to squeeze the fish. But okay, business is business, no complaints. Now, I don't see absolutely nothing on the brush. I see the brush, but there's no fish on the brush right now. And the wind is starting to get stiff. I don't like stiff wind. If it keeps getting stiffer and stiffer... I mean, I'm anchored good here. But you just can't cast this float against the wind. You can't cast a one gram jig against the wind. So what I may have to do is go upwind, anchor there, turn downwind. Oh, that was the first cast, folks. Without a bite. Forget about without a fish. I didn't get a bite on this cast. I told you I don't see absolutely nothing. Which is very strange. I don't see little dots. I don't know what happened. That's not normal. I promise you, a big musky or walleye came and the fish ran for cover. I did not catch this fish. I promise you that's what happened. But that's okay. I've, I've had this happen all the time. And what happens is they really don't disperse. Huh, that was a bite, I think. They just run for cover, but they wait it out. They don't run too far. And just one or two minutes later, they're gonna they're gonna pop. They're gonna pop back out. I think there was a little bite, but not a good bite. I think that fish spooked them, which is unfortunate. I do want it to make a uncut video with continuous business no man I don't see no fish right now two casts with nothing No, I'm jigging now, though, you, even though you don't have to jig. This is the perfect waves for float. This is the perfect chop. More than this, and it becomes... The fish is moving... If it's moving six inches up and down, 
it becomes uh, uncomfortable for the crappy to, to eat it and it doesn't look natural. If you have s more than six inch, or even six inches too much, waves, top to bottom, float doesn't work so good. I don't know what to do, folks. See? Nobody to blame. But musky sometimes. It's not that there's no fish here. If you just came, you think there's no fish. But I know this brush still has fish. It's around. It will come back. It will come back and it will be fast action again. But the video might be too long. Boom! Finally! How long without a fish? Feels decent. Nice male. Nice bigger male. Nice big male. Well, perfect hood set. How the hell, without a barb, you still... I'll let you go, buddy. <laughs> I don't know, lately I have problem with holding the fish. I'm dropping all of them. But okay, let's try to cast a few more times against this wind. Yeah, this wind is uh, right now borderline. If it goes up even just a little bit more, I, I will not be able to cast. Then you have to get closer to the brush. But that does poke the fish. I mean, people used to fly a lot of nonsense before live scope. Now they don't get scared, they're not line shy, they don't care. A lot of nonsense used to fly. That nonsense don't fly no more. They do get spooked from trolling motor. They get spooked good. There's another fish. They spook, get spooked sometimes from the shadow of the boat. Although I have seen... I have seen that work both ways. I have seen... Fish get spooked from the shadow of the boat. Then I have seen... You park somewhere, and there is no fish, and fish comes and parks right in the shadow of your boat. They use the boat for cover. So that can work both ways. Usually, stop it. The same exact size like the two I dropped. Usually, if the fish is there when you approach them, they will get spooked. The depth is too much again. Uh, but if you're not there, and they approach you, then they don't mind. Okay, I start to, to see fish again. Yeah, I start to see fish again. See? There is some dots again. Okay, they're small dots, but there is some, some dots again. So the business, business should pick up again. Should be nice and fast. Where's my next customer? Boom. See, I w without a musky, folks. I don't know if I should put musky in the title of this video. Because we never saw musky, but I can bet a thousand dollars that that was a musky. And that is a nice slab of roux here. That is a nice slab of roux. That is identical female to the one I kept. That is a nice, he ate my little, that is a nice slab, folks. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna keep this guy. I mean, how do you not keep a few of these? Whoa.
The other thing is, it's good to when you fish the same brush a long time. It's good if you have a second float. Now I have a second float right behind me, but it's shorter. I don't think I'm gonna cast against the wind with it. With just a different color or a different bait. It's not about one bait being the better than the other, but I think they have already gotten, they have already seen my warm enough times, folks. They have seen it pass through, pass through. The ones who thought that's a good meal, I already caught them. Maybe some of them are back by the brush and they're spooking the other fish. But the ones that thought this worm is not a good meal, well, they're not, you're not gonna catch them now. But okay, this is the last fish of the day. As always, I close the video with the smallest fish of the day. I kid you not, this is the smallest fish I caught today. I mean, this is a four, five incher, but hey, no complaints. That's good business just from the first brush. I mean, it's not even eight o'clock yet. What is it? 8.06, oh, that's a 40 minute video. But uh, already good business. This is a seven and a half inch crappie. Okay, I know it's baby, but it's still seven and a half. So thank you for watching, folks. I appreciate it. I know this is a long video, but I got some feedback that some people actually like the unedited stuff and the time between the fish. What do people do in the time between the fish? And it's easier for the editor, you know, to once in a while just let the whole thing out. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.